I hope you all are having a wonderful week. My name is Yupari, and I'd like to invite you into this portrait painting demonstration. So this week I decided I would try out uh, the most affordable palette setup. So the most affordable color palette setup for portrait painting. I decided to use all four series one colors. So that is titanium white, Venetian red, yellow ochre, and ivory black. These are all four series one colors, meaning that they're uh, very, very inexpensive colors. And um, the way that I'm going to approach this painting is uh, using an alla prima approach, meaning that I'm going to be completing the painting uh, wet on wet, all in one sitting. So let's get to the painting video. Now to get started with the portrait, I'm going to be using just a little piece of vine charcoal. Now if you want to know exactly what materials that I'll be using for this uh, painting demonstration, you can always go ahead and scroll down to the description box below and I'll have all of that information typed up for you. So getting started, I'm thinking of the placement of the head onto the canvas. So maybe I want to place the head, I don't know, right about here, kind of centered horizontally, but a little bit higher up vertically. Now with just a few little straight lines and angles, I just want to get an idea of where I want to place the head. So let's suppose the shoulders about here. Sorry, the collar is right about there. The shoulder might fall about here. Now there is an angle, a very distinct angle that the shoulder is making like this. So we're just going to go ahead and follow through from one side to the other. Now I have to think about the shape of the head and only the shape of the head at this point. I'm not really going to focus on any kind of little tiny details or anything like that. I'm trying to think holistically about this um, design. Just the big picture. And let's look at one little diagonal from one ear to the other. So the head is kind of at a tilt. So if we go ahead and imagine this is the axis for the eyebrows, you can see that there's kind of a distinct uh, angle that we're seeing there. And so we can follow through. Here we have the axis of the eyes. And let's go ahead and throw in a center line. So the center line is not exactly straight. It's kind of at an angle. Kind of at an angle like that. Here we're going to have the nose. Just a simple little indicator there for where I think the nose might fit. And again, I'm going to go over all of this with paint shortly. So this is just to get an idea of where everything is going to be placed. So here we're throwing in a little accent mark for the corner of the eye socket. And let's go ahead and look at the other side of the eye socket. Thinking very structurally now, I'm not really thinking about uh, any kind of little tiny details. Rather, I'm thinking of the large structure of the head. So let's see, there's a little shape here for the for the forehead. So this that I'm using right here, this is a chamois cloth and it's very useful for subtracting charcoal and erasing it. So let's just go ahead and take a look at these shapes here. Now on the outside we have a little diagonal right about here thinking of the characteristics of uh, our model, I, I noticed that the mandible is at a very uh, elegant angle. It's not very square like mine. It's kind of at a sharp angle. So let's go ahead and indicate that. So if we're thinking about the angle of the mandible, uh, we can also get a nice kind of uh, sense of harmony throughout the outside shape. And by harmony, I mean how this 
harmoniously kicks into here and then overlaps out there. So again, let's look at this little shape here for the ear. Just a simple little uh, shape for that. Just using straight lines and angles. Now if the eyes were to fit about here, remember I'm going to be painting over this, so I'm not going to be too concerned uh, with the delicacy of my marks. But if I'm imagining that the eyes are here, um, I'm going to run into a problem with the placement of the ear. So the ear is actually going to have to be moved a little bit further down. And then following through to the other side, the same kind of thing is going to happen here. And we're just thinking structurally, just thinking about the structure, not worried about making a pretty image or anything like that, just focused on the simple shape and these large underlying structures. Here we have a little angle here for the hair, and I'm just thinking about the peripheral uh, view, thinking of what am I noticing of the model at a glance. It's very easy to just stare and stare and stare and stare at your model and see every little bit of uh, information in detail where, whereas in the beginning I think it's kind of useful to selectively uh, see one large structure at a time. Let's go ahead and quickly just look at the uh, little angle for the shadow shape. And now uh, what I mean by structural thinking is that I'm thinking of how this shape that I'm seeing here represents the uh, structure of the, of the model's cheekbone. So I see that there's a very distinct shape coming out here, angling in this way. And then I wanna imagine on the other side. Now, upon completing this simple little uh, charcoal drawing, the next stage will be uh, putting in basically the mask of the face with color. So ignoring details, uh, we're going to look at the large underlying structure of the portrait. But in order to do that, I, I think it's kind of helpful to know uh, where the large structures are going to fit. So now if we think about the um, structure of the cheekbone, this is coming in here. And this shape actually comes out a little bit further. Now if I'm imagining this, this shape out here, I see that I probably have too much, probably came out a little too far with that. So let's cut that in. Now that's a little more accurate. Now let's imagine this large shape um, for the, the facial hair. So this comes all the way down here. And we can also think about the muzzle of the mouth, uh, meaning this large structure that encompasses the mouth. Luckily for us, the facial hair is kind of giving us a very simple uh, shape to go off of. And the orbicularis oris would be right about here, this muscle right here that encompasses the mouth. And the facial hair very eloquently kind of fits around that entire structure. Now for the mouth, I'm just going to use a, a few simple lines. Not sure if it's going to be in the right place. Usually isn't in the first uh, try, but, to, but it's enough to get us in the general direction of which we need to progress. A little angle here. Now, the characteristics of the model that are most uh, catching to me are the eyebrows, the distinct angle of the eyebrows, the width of the wing of the nose, of the wings of the nose, and then the angle of the mandible. These are the characteristics that I'm observing on our model that are most um, prevalent to me. So there's a little angle here. Don't want to get too caught up with that. And then let's imagine this plane all the way on the other side. 
right about there. Now let's get into some of the flesh tone colors. So I'm going to be using yellow ochre, Venetian red, so just yellow ochre, Venetian red, titanium white. So this is going to help us create our first little flesh tone that we're going to use to cover the light masses. And remember, we're going to be thinking about the large uh, underlying structures first. So without using any, any type of medium, just the paint itself, we're going to be putting in our first little flesh tone. I'm sorry that this is shaking. This is why I usually don't um, put my easel in the materials because this easel is pretty bad. It's broken in several ways, but I try to make it work. So let's go ahead and just fill in this shape here now for the light masses of the flesh tone, leaving some little gaps in between uh, for the other structures. So let's go ahead and fill that in to here. Wherever I see a simple shape of light, I will fill in this mass. So I'm going to leave the eye socket alone for now. This whole shape is going to be one distinct value, but we'll get to that. So just filling this in. So this flesh tone is a little bit, uh, a little bit darker and a little bit warmer than need be. And um, that is because I'm using an opaque white. I'm using titanium white. I don't have a, a uh, I don't have flake white on my palette that I, uh, I usually use flake white because I can use more of it uh, without raising the intensity of the color too much. Um, but I think we can get by with titanium white just fine. And the reason that I'm going warmer and darker is because as we build up the colors with titanium white, they're going to get lighter and they're going to get cooler as a consequence. So now, switching brushes, I'm going to combine the Venetian red, ivory black, so Venetian red, ivory black. Go and put in our darkest accents now. So dark accent for the concavity of the eye socket. Let's look at the other side of the eye socket. And we're thinking structurally. Uh, we're not really thinking about any kind of little tiny details right now. Just structure. Venetian red, ivory black, just these two. Just putting in our most emphatic darks, meaning our most eye-catching darks. Just filling in this shape here. Now this shape is going to go all the way around here. A little more ivory black, Venetian red. Just filling in this shape now. Shape comes out a little bit more. I'm kind of applying the brush strokes in this direction, diagonal, uh, just to try to eliminate glare. Notice that if I put a brush stroke in this direction, we get quite a bit of glare. So let's go ahead and just cover this shape now. Angles out right about there. that's going to be our simple little mass for the light shape. Remember I said in the beginning not to get too attached to the outlines. Now that we have that shape in there, let's go ahead and switch to a different brush. Let's go ahead and kind of mix in between these two. So yellow ochre, Venetian red, titanium white, ivory black, Go ahead and put in this plane now. So we're thinking very much like a sculptor. So just a large shape, a large chop into there uh, for the eye socket. 
and now let's do the same thing to the other eye socket. Not using any medium, by the way, just the paint. Now we're going to use this same color to help us put in our first little half tone. First little half tone. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Now this is the part of the painting usually where um, we kind of start developing the large structures and it, it can be kind of awkward sometimes when you see kind of a, a portrait without any features and that's just because we're so used to seeing detail we're so used to seeing photographs of people we're so used to seeing features we're always focused on the eyes we're always focused on the nose and all of that and we don't really see uh, the large underlying structures so this is kind of in a way learning how to see in a completely different fashion so we're trying to see the underlying form within uh, or sorry the underlying form of which all of the little tiny shapes fit on top of so again just working away filling in the shape here I'm gonna use a little more yellow ochre titanium white to make an even brighter color and here we're going to have a little shape right here and before too long I have to put in something for the hair so switching brushes I'm going to use ivory black titanium white ivory black titanium white a little bit of Venetian red we're going to start putting in our little shape let's see a little more ivory black dark shape right over here a little bit darker over here A little more titanium white. Put in a tiny bit of yellow ochre. A little more yellow ochre. Just trying to make this color a little warmer. There we go. Fill that into here. A little bit more of this dark shape. Ivory black. Venetian red. Now we're going to take this, this color, add a little bit more of the titanium white and start to kind of indicate where the facial hair is going to fit. And at this point in the painting, you really got to learn uh, to let go. I mean, I think that it's a little bit easier on the eyes to start out with a very finished drawing and then filling in the color um, but that way kind of I mean I, I like working that way where you just do the entire outline and then uh, filling it in with the color but I feel like this way uh, we're starting out with something that's very sculptural it's a lot of fun to work this way very liberating when you're not too focused on outline you're trying to see just simple shape comes out to there now with the darker color so the Venetian red ivory black see that there's still a little more on this side that I need and the idea really is to just fill this with color so that we can kind of sculpt it so Venetian red titanium white little little pink let's add a little bit of pink here now to this color to this shape for the ear 
It's a little tiny bit of pink there. Now let's go ahead and on the palette, let's create a little uh, value scale. So the ivory black, Venetian red, more ivory black. So this is gonna be the darker end of the spectrum for our flesh tones. Let's designate a half tone brush. So this will be our designated half tone brush. Just a tiny bit of titanium white into the mid-range of the colors. Then switching to a different brush. This is going to be our light, light brush. So just yellow ochre, titanium white. And so we're going to have this value range now to continue to sculpt these forms. And I'm not using any medium whatsoever. So a very useful thing to think about uh, especially with a limited palette such as this one, um, would be the drying rates of your paint. So ivory black is a pretty slow dryer. Most of your reds are going to be very, very slow dryers, and titanium white dries even more slowly than, say, uh, a lead white or a flake white. So what you get is a palette that's very, very slow drying. So it's very conducive to this technique. Uh, again, this is an ala prima type of approach. So with a little bit of yellow ochre, Venetian red, and a little bit of gray, I'm going to go ahead and just cover right over here. So I'm gonna label gray as white and ivory black just so I don't have to keep repeating that so gray is going to be white and ivory black even though white and ivory black actually creates a kind of um, kind of a bluish tone so let's think about this shape here for the bottom of the eye socket it's a little bit lighter actually than I have it a little bit warmer so a little more titanium white some gray and Venetian red. So it's a little bit of Venetian red, titanium white, and the gray. Here we're going to put in this little shape. Just thinking of this little form for the eye socket. Now, with a little bit of Venetian red, titanium white, we're gonna get a very nice pink. So I'm going to go ahead and combine white, Venetian red first, then add a little bit of, of the uh, Venetian red, ivory black mixed separately. Let's see if we can get a little tone here. So that tone is gonna be probably a little too dark. So a little more white and Venetian red. There we go. It's giving us this type of pinkish hue that we need. And then of course that shape is going to go, uh, that shape is going to have to be mimicked on the other side. So a little more pink. And I'm not terribly worried about the placement of the features or anything like that, which is kind of an interesting way of looking at the portrait. So I'm letting these large structures that I'm constructing, uh, I'm letting these structures dictate where the features are going to fit, as opposed to trying to measure where the features are going to fit individually. So the idea is um, painting these structures as accurately as I can by just observing these simple shapes and structures in relation to one another. 
and the end result should make the placement of the features, the final placement of the features, very simple and easy to see. So a little bit of yellow ochre and gray. We have this little turning plane. It's a plane that's turning away from the light. And it's all right if some of the brush strokes um, coincide with one another. There's a little more half tone right here. So very this is a very liberating way of working. And I can't stress that enough. Half tone right about here. And I'll tell you what, I'm really liking this palette. Um, just the titanium white, Venetian red, yellow ochre, and ivory black. Oftentimes, I have a very bright and chromatic red, like my cadmium red medium, but I oftentimes don't really need that much chroma. Now, I'm sure there are instances where that would be necessary. But for, for the majority of portraits, such, such as a, a shape such as this is kind of a kind of a stand-in for where the mid-range of the eye socket is going to be. A shape like that, that color combination is no more complicated than the Venetian red and white mixed together with the yellow ochre and ivory black. Kind of very simple. Too simple to believe sometimes, really, what you can get with a limited palette. Kind of hard to believe what simple colors can produce. A little bit more light here. So this plane right here is for the concavity of the eye socket on the other side. So I'm imagining this shape on the other side here. There we go. Gets a little darker and warmer there. So let's use the Venetian red and the gray again. A little darker and warmer here. But then it gets lighter and cooler as it wraps around this side. Very simple. Now I'm trying to imagine the forms of the face uh, without worrying too much about the glasses. I know that there will be glasses and don't worry, I'll put the glasses in, but let's first consider these structures. So here's kind of the bottom plane of the, uh, the cheekbone. Here's the cheekbone structure, bottom plane. And remember as shapes angle away from the light source, uh, they will in general get darker. Let's add a little more yellow ochre to this shape right about there. After working out the large structures of the face, it's now time to get into the smaller uh, shapes. So that will be the features. Um, so I'm just using ivory black and a combination of Venetian red and yellow ochre onto a little size two round brush. So here we're gonna map out the little top, the highest most portion of the eye. So this will be the peak of convexity right up here. And let's put in a dark shape here now for the iris. Simple little shape there for that. Now I'm gonna keep using my fan brush to eliminate glare because we can get quite a bit of glare, um, especially in the smaller shapes. So now I'm gonna use some titanium white, ivory black, and a little bit of uh, flesh tone. So just 
a little bit of flesh tone taken from the palette. And this color is going to be for the sclera of the eye. So that is the white of the eye. So this will fit in somewhere about here. Still not using any medium. But I will tell you, um, I'm using synthetic brushes now um, for my smaller shapes. And the synthetic brushes tend to layer on top of the brush strokes left behind by the bristle brushes uh, fairly well. So that's actually helping me layer the shape. Now I'm going to look at the other side. So right over here, we're going to have the white of the eye, so the sclera. Just a simple little shape there. Now I'm kind of being a little cautious at the placement or with the placement of the sclera. I know that there's a little angle like this, slight angle like this, very tiny though. So just being a little cautious at the placement of the shape. Now let's go ahead with the dark value. So the ivory black mixed with the Venetian red. Put in that shape there. Now we're going to switch to the fan brush to help eliminate some glare. A little bit more Venetian red. So right around right around here is where I normally would use a lizard permanent. Um, just to tint a little bit red-ish. So to tint this area red-ish, I'm just using the tiniest bit of Venetian red to quite a bit of ivory black. Just a little red-ish. And now, of course, we're going to put in the iris. Now we're going to put in the, um, the eyes before we put on the glasses. So that's why we're working. Uh, basically, that's why we're kind of ignoring the glasses for now. We'll add them on top. A little bit darker here. Now I see a tiny bit of uh, the sclera on the other side here. So just a little more ivory black. Just a little bit. And the same goes on the other side, seeing just a tiny bit. Now it's a different brush using just titanium white and a tiny bit of ivory black. We're going to put in this little highlight. Little highlight there. And then we're going to walk our way to the other side. Little touch of highlight there. And now, basically, with the same brush, I'm just going to clean it off and use a little bit of mineral spirits. So, just mineral spirits, just tiniest bit to thin out the paint. Ivory black and Venetian red. I'm going to go ahead and put this dark accent here. Right up here, so the peak of convexity. And this angles down. And on the other side, I'm going to use the same brush, just add a little bit of Venetian red. And we're going to have the little shape here for the tear duct. Probably we'll need to add a little more Venetian red. And there we have the little shape for the tear duct. And now, 
with the same little brush, I'm going to clean it off with odorless mineral spirits and then use ivory black, yellow ochre, and then a tiny bit of Venetian red. Now I want the paint to be pretty thin, so that's why I'm thinning it out with the Venetian red. So now we're going to start to put in the shape for the glasses. So right over here. So the idea is that thinner paint that is paint thinned out with mineral spirits uh, will stick onto thicker paint. Now over here. Corner of the glasses. And here's a little dark shape there. A little more ivory black. And the fan brush. So here we have the top of the glasses. Top of the glasses on the other side. Just paying attention to the shape of the glasses. A little dark shape here. Then we have a dark shape over here. I use the fan brush just to get rid of the glare. Now just titanium white and ivory black, thinning it out with a little bit of mineral spirits, just mineral spirits. Now we're going to put in this little light, little light shape here. Over here we have a little square of light, little tiny reflection. Some light right there. And we have a little tiny bit of light over here. Touch here. And then a little bit of light down here. Nice and simple. Now moving on down to the nose, I'm going to look at the uh, most emphatic darks, the most significant dark. So right here, my eye goes right to this. So again, just ivory black and Venetian red. Very distinct dark shape here. I think I need a tiny bit more Venetian red. Just a little more Venetian red there for that shape. And now I see that there's a little more pink that I need. So I'm going to use just titanium white and Venetian red. Let's use a little more Venetian red. Now the value is too light, so more Venetian red. There we go. I think there was just a little more pink that I needed there. Now just the titanium white and uh, yellow ochre. Here we have a little highlight. Simple little highlight there for the nose. I'm going to use just Venetian red and ivory black mixed together and then actually add just a touch of yellow ochre. Here we have this little side plane for the nose. See how we can build on top of that large uh, simplified shape? really is the small things that the small things are really kind of the easier parts to fit on top of the larger things a little more light over here or the nose 
gonna use the fan brush to eliminate some glare. Now, moving on down to the mouth, I'm gonna use ivory black, Venetian red, just ivory black, Venetian red. Here we have a very distinct dark shape here. Fan brush. Now yellow ochre, Venetian red, and then titanium white. Probably a little more Venetian red than yellow ochre. We have the little light on the bottom of the lip. Very simple there. Now with a little more Venetian red, I'm going to go ahead and just carve into this shape now. Very simple. Fan brush. Going to use a little bit of ivory black. Venetian red for this shape here. And maybe titanium white, so gray with Venetian red. And even over here. Gonna go back to the color for the lower lip. Very simple there. Now with a little bit of gray, which again is just the titanium white and ivory black, I'm gonna start to put in a little traces of the teeth that we see. Very tiny. Now with the same brush, I'm gonna clean it off with the odorless mineral spirits. I'm going to use ivory black, quite a bit of ivory black and a little bit of a little bit of our Venetian red. I'm trying to just get his expression here. Maybe a little more Venetian red. Here we have this shape here. Very simple. I'm just gonna use the fan brush to help eliminate the glare and to also soften these edges. There's still a little more of a shape down here. Now back to the Venetian red, yellow ochre, titanium white. Let's move this back up. Very simple. And there's even a little passage of light down here. A little more yellow ochre, titanium white. Now that we have the features in place, let's go ahead and put in a tone for the background. So I'm going to use ivory black, tiny bit of titanium white, and just a tiny bit of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna dilute the paint with a tiny bit of odorless mineral spirits, just a tiny bit. And the reason that I'm only using odorless mineral spirits is just because this is a very um, inexpensive palette setup. So I thought I might as well just make the whole setup very inexpensive, uh, just to show you what you can do. 
with uh, very simple materials. So just ivory black, a little bit of titanium white. And I think this is about good. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the background now. Now that we have the the rest of the background tone filled in, I'm going to go ahead and address some of the shapes uh, for the collar. So I'm going to switch brushes now. And I'm going to use a little bit of ivory black. Back to the titanium white, just ivory black titanium white but I'm using a little more of the titanium white. And I'm gonna take out a glimpse, just a tiny little glimpse there of the Venetian red, just a tiny bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the light area of the collar first. Just this little light passage here. That's all right if we cut into the neck by accident. It's just paint. And I think I'm going to add a little more ivory black. And we're going to have the lighter portion of this area of the shirt. Let's go ahead and eliminate some of the glare, the fan brush. Now with the same brush, I'm going to add a little more ivory black. I'm going to draw out this shape now. I think it comes in something like that. Down to here. I'm also thinking of the, the vignette now. Remember the vignette is the area uh, that I leave unfinished on purpose just to complement the more finished areas. So let's say something about like that. Let's take some of this ivory black and let's just go ahead and fill in the rest of this shape now. Now that we have the rest of this little shape filled in, there's a little dark shirt here. So actually first, let's put in this dark fold. Just letting some of the ivory black mix with this color. All right, so now just the ivory black on its own and maybe a smidgen of Venetian red. And let's just go ahead and fill in this dark mass now. Now that we have this dark mass filled in, I see a little tiny glimpse of a shadow, a little cast shadow here. Let's just kind of suggest that. Now switching back to the background brush, I'm going to again mix into the ivory black titanium white. Add a little more titanium white than the background. Not that much though. And I'm gonna thin out the paint just a little bit with the mineral spirits. Maybe 2% mineral spirits, very little. And that's all it takes really to get the paint to just flow. Don't wanna use too much of the mineral spirits though. And let's just let some of these brush strokes on the bottom show. Just for a kind of painterly type of effect. So now I'm going to wipe off some of the excess mineral spirit off my brush. Go back into the ivory black. And I see that I can delineate this shape a little better. I think this actually will go down. Something like that.
Now let's go ahead and get the fan brush. Eliminate some of the glare that we just created with all that. Let's just distribute this paint up here. Just distributing the paint. Now there's still kind of a little bit of uh, drapery here that I want to suggest. So with the ivory black and just a tiny feather-like touch, very feather, feathery type touch. I'm going to sketch in just these tiny little shapes for the fold. The fold's just a little bit. Don't need much for this. With a little bit of Venetian red and a tiny bit of ivory black, let's just go ahead and add just a tiny little shape here for the ear. Let's use a little more Venetian red. Very simple little shape there. Now it's a little more Venetian red. Let's go ahead and put in this little shape here. Very tiny little touches. Don't need much for the ear. Now we're going to add a little bit of titanium white and ivory black. Tiny bit of yellow ochre, just a tiny bit of yellow ochre. And we're going to start to put in some of these little light shapes here. Let's add a little more yellow ochre. Very tiny little shapes. I'm going to let the brush strokes suggest uh, the facial hair. There's even a little bit of facial hair down here too. Very tiny little touches. It helps to kind of blur your eyes um, to see how much information to put in. Don't want to put in every single hair. Just a little more down here. And you know what? There's kind of some over here as well. Didn't didn't notice it before. Very, very tiny. It's a little bit of the flesh tone directly from the palette. I'm going to go ahead and um, eliminate this little mark that I left from earlier. And again, there's some little glimpses of light over here. Let's just go ahead and put them in. Thinking about the plane changes, even within the facial hair, you can think of this right there as a plane, and then the darker areas being uh, planes that are receding further away. And now, of course, I'm going to switch to the fan brush. Just eliminate some of the glare and soften some of these edges as well. And of course we can't forget about the little reflection here for the glasses. So remember the glasses are actually kind of uh, distorting some of the uh, outside shape on this corner. Usually I would uh, try to leave that out, but I think that the glasses are a, a major part of uh, our model's likeness, so I'm definitely going to include even the, the little 
a uh, bit of distortion on the outside shape that the glasses creates. And you know what? After doing that, I see that I'm kind of missing a little dark shape here. Very simple little shape. I'm going to use the fan brush. Back to the flesh tone color. Just a simple little dark shape here on the bottom. Don't need much. And now, of course, there's going to be a little tiny glimpse of light over here for the corner of the glasses. Just ivory black. Just ivory black. And a little bit of titanium white. And one of the last things I'll do now is with a very, uh, with, with a clean synthetic brush, I'm just going to soften uh, some of the edges. So in particular, just this edge, I think, uh, was bothering me. Just have to soften it. And this is the advantage of working wet on wet. You can just go in and soften whenever you like. Maybe even hmm, perhaps this shape here. Remember, this is just a um, a regular old synthetic brush. This is also kind of how we can pull a lot of shapes together. You can also do this with a fan brush. Just softening wherever I feel necessary. I think that's about it, really. Probably here. Yeah. Tiniest little touch. And with that, we have the conclusion of this week's portrait painting demonstration. I really hope that these videos are helping you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one.